Amen. Call on me. Call on me and I will answer you. Praise the name of the Lord. Greetings, my brethren, in the wonderful name of Jesus. Another day. Thank God for we are still here on the land of the living, giving glory to God for this great, big, wonderful God that we serve. Bless the name of the Lord. It's a wonderful day today. We give thanks to be alive. We're not six foot under. Yesterday we had to attend the funeral and it's um, fortunately it's a child of God who's gone home to glory. So we give praise to God for that. Praise the name of Jesus. You know, we should rejoice when God has taken his, his children home to a better place because we know that this is not the life. There's a better life beyond the blue. Praise the Lord. So thank God for this another Sunday, this another week. And, you know, we are still alive and giving strength and strength. We are alive and well, and we give praise to God. So, thank God we went, uh, had a lovely day today um, with Pastor McGann, um, Bible Rock Church. God is good. God is wonderful. And we give praise to God for all that he has done, all that he's doing, and what he's yet to do. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I would like to continue on the last, this last week on the subject of faith. Faith. We was on, this is the third time we are going to visit the chapter of Hebrews chapter 11. And I'm going to complete this series of power of faith. How big is your faith? You know, we know that faith is very important to God. As a matter of fact, we, the Bible tells us that without faith it is impossible to please God. So we know that one of the pride, one of the prime ingredients in serving God is to have faith. Very, very important that we have faith. You know, and the Bible tells us that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Um, that is to tell us that the more we, the more we hear the word of God, is the greater our faith become. So it's always good to know the word of God, because that word of God builds our faith. Addition to our experience and what He's done for us and what we have, when we have seen the hand of God moving in our life, we say, "Give glory to God, give glory to God." Because God is real. Amen. God is not dead. God is alive. Amen. God is alive and well. So, and He's a great God. He knows all things. He sees all things. He's all powerful. And He's everywhere. Praise the Lord. Thank God. So, before we go into the Word of God, I want to have a short prayer as usual. Father, I thank you. Father, I praise you. Father, I bless you. Your wonderful and holy name. Thanking you for your loving kindness. Thanking you for your tender mercies towards us. My God, you're such a great God. You're such a mighty God. You're so powerful, my God. You're so wise, my God. Your wisdom, my God, is unsearchable. Your power also is unsearchable. Your grace and your mercies is beyond our comprehension. So we give you thanks for who you are to us. Give you thanks for remembering us, being mindful of us. We give you glory. Pray you bless us as we go into your word. Pray you guide our, our intentions, Lord Jesus, and let everything we say, I say, maybe to the praise, and to the glory, and to the honor of your wonderful name. Touch any sick and afflicted that among us, and that may be bereaved, remember them, Oh God, those who may be suffering from one way or another, pray you will touch them, Lord. Let your grace and mercy be upon us, as we ask these blessings in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Glory and honor belong to the God of our, belong to our God. Praise the Lord. So, I want to continue from verse 23. We was talking last week about Jacob, Joseph, you know, how by faith God blessed them abundantly. 
the blessing was abundant. Joseph, when he was cast into the pit, and from the pit, they, his brother sold him to the Ishmaelites. The Ishmaelites took him down to Egypt, which we know Egypt is Africa. So all the children of Israel were in Egypt, which is Africa. So his brother sold him unto Egypt, and um, he was made, God worked miraculously to make him the prince of Egypt from the pit that his brother threw him into to the prince of Egypt. So it's, it's a lesson for us to know that God can lift us up at any time. No matter how low we find ourselves, God can lift us up. Just as he lift up Joseph, he can do it for any one of us. So we're going to move on to, Je to, to Moses. Moses is said to be one of the meekest men who ever walked on the earth. Meek, meek and humble. My God. He was also made prince in Egypt. Um, we know that um, Pharaoh wanted to destroy all the male child in Egypt. But his mother hid him and his sister took him in a basket, put him on the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the river, and the Pharaoh's daughter saw him, and God put, God put Moses, large Moses, in the heart of Pharaoh's daughter, that when she saw Moses, she couldn't resist him. She loved him. God put love in Pharaoh's daughter's heart for Moses, that baby. And he said, she said, ah, this is going to be my son. And God blessed Moses, that Moses was exalted and called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Just like that. So we learn from this scripture, which are we talking about faith, of great faith, is that God always lifts his people up. He always lifts his people up. Moses became the son of Pharaoh's daughter. It's like being, you know, the, the son of the prince, or son of the, king, the princess of England or whatever, you know. Just lift him up like that. Because God has a plan for him. So, it went to verse 23. I want to read the, um, from verse 23 to 14. And I will elaborate on the word. So it says, verse 23, By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw that he was a proper child. And they were not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith, Moses when he come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction, hallelujah, with the people of God, than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures of Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured, as seeing him who is invisible. Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of the blood, lest he that destroy the firstborn touch him. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptian assayed 
to do were drowned. Hallelujah. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they had compassed it about seven days. By faith, Rahab perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace. And what shall, be, what, what shall I say? What more shall I say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gilead, Barak, and Samson, and Jetri, of David also, of Samuel, and of the prophets, who through faith subdue kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lion, quenched the violence of fire, hallelujah, escaped the edge of the sword, out of the weakness were made strong. Wax valiant in fight, turn to the fight the enemies of the aliens. Women received dead, raised again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance. They that might obtain a better that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trials of cruel mocking and scourging, yea, moreover of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were short, short, they were sown asunder. When tempted, were slain with a sword by the wonders about in she they wandered about in sheepskin and goatskin, being destitute afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in the desert and in the mountain and in the den and caves of the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise, having God having provided some better things for us that they without us should not be made perfect. Praise God. I love this word. It is such a blessing. When we look into the word of God, what the word has got, what the word of God has got for us. Oh my, it is awesome. It is so powerful. And if we only meditate of the, on the word of God. That's why David said that word of I hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee. If we meditate. And it said let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart. If we meditate on the word of God. It comes over so powerful. It is so alive. It is so good. It is such a blessing. It is such an encouragement in all our situation and in all our circumstances. If we hold on to the Word of God, there, there, there's nothing can stop us. Nothing can overcome us because the Word of God is so powerful and so it is so unique. It is so great. It is so wonderful. We can't even express the goodness and the power in the word of God. So we look at Moses now. It says Moses by faith. Hebrews 11 verse 23. If you just join us. Hebrews 11 from verse 23 to the end. By faith Moses when he was born was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. How wonderful is that? 
When he was born, his parents hid him because the decree went out that all male child should be killed because the children of Israel was multiplying in Egypt and they were afraid that the children of Israel would overtake Egypt. And so the, the Pharaoh made a decree that all male child should be killed. But God has his mark on Moses. When God has his mark on us, it doesn't matter what the world says, no matter what the world does. We have no fear because God has his mark on us. So his parents hid him. How did they hid him? God allowed his parents to hid him. That even when the Egyptians came, knock on the door, they could not find him. Because they hid him. And the Bible says they saw he was a proper child. You know when a child is proper? How, how is it he's just three months old but they knew that God had a mark on him. And so they hid him. And it went on to say they were not afraid of the king's commandments. Now, if we think about that, sometimes things that happen to us and in this natural world, when, when the authorities made a decree, we have to balance that decree against the word of God. And then we have to make a decision, do we obey the decree of the governor, governors of this world or do we obey God? Because many times the decree that the government may contradict the, the, the God's commandments. So then we have to make a choice. But the Bible says here that Moses' parents were not afraid of the king's commandment. So it's not everything that they that govern us we should be afraid of. And it's not everything that they, the rulers of this world, say to us we should obey. Because they knew that the Pharaoh wanted to kill all the child. But they did, were not afraid of the king's commandments. So I went on to say, by faith Moses, when he came to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. When he became of age, when he had understanding, when he realized that um, Pharaoh's daughter was not his true mother, when he realized that his mother was a Hebrew, when he realized his, sisters were, his sister was Hebrew, and he realized that God was with those people, he says it to himself, he, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He, choosing rather to suffer affliction. You see, this is how the world is. He chose, Moses chose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. That's the faith he had. He would rather suffer with the people of God, holding on to the promise of God, knowing that he's serving the true and living God, rather to subject himself to Pharaoh and his house to enjoy the pleasures all that he, as a son as a son of Pharaoh's daughter he could have had anything he wanted in Egypt he could command anything he wanted it's like now you can, you know if you wealthy you can have anything you can, you can go anywhere you can you're free in this world but Moses chose rather rather to suffer with the people of God. Suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy. So it just shows us that in this world, everything is just for a season. The pleasures of this world is just for a season. Whatever we achieve in this world is just for a season. 
Moses saw that everything about this world was just for a season. The Bible says, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and to lose his soul? And if we look at what's happening today, everybody is clam clamoring for what they can grab, what they can put, what they can hold. What, some, some are clamoring for more than they can manage. They, they, cannot, they cannot contain what they manage. And yet they're clamoring and clamoring clamoring for, for the pleasures of this world which is just for a season because this world will pass away everything in this world will be consumed but Moses realized that true faith he had he true faith he realized that and he said I, I want to serve the true and living God I don't want to serve man I don't want to serve the pleasures of this world. I want to serve God. So he chose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God. He says, so even Moses, before Christ came, he says, esteem. He was esteeming the reproach of Christ greater than the riches and treasures of Egypt. He was thinking the reproach that, you know, children, a child of God may be reproached for our faith. We may be rejected for our faith. We may be ridiculed for our faith. We may be persecuted for our faith. But Moses was in that situation, but he was esteeming that whatever he suffered for Christ was greater was greater the suffering that he and the reproach that he was to undergo was greater than the treasures in Egypt for he had respect unto the recompense of a reward the Bible says to us Paul writing I think to the Corinthians say, cast not away your confidence, for it has a great recompense of a reward. We should not cast away our confidence in God, because it has a great recompense of a reward. Whatever we suffer for Jesus is multiplied, the joy is multiplied a thousandfold, a hundredfold. So he had respect unto the reward. He had respect unto the promises of God. Just as Abraham did, just as uh, Jacob, just as Joseph and the twelve tribes of Israel who came out to serve God, the tribes of Levi, they all had confidence, trust and respect to the recompense of the reward. The recompense of the reward is a promise that God has made to his people. He has made a promise to us in these days. He says, go on to the Father. In the Father's house, there are many mansions. He said, if it was not so, I would have told you. And we know that God can't lie. There's only two things God can't do. One of them, he can't lie. And the next thing, he can't fail. Hallelujah. God cannot lie. God cannot fail. Hallelujah. So we now should have respect unto the recompense of the reward. We want to serve God that when he do come, he can look on us and say, Well done, thou good and faithful son. You know, now it's going to be wonderful when Jesus comes. Can you think of anything greater that when Jesus comes back to earth and he look us, look on us and he says, Well done. Well done. Thou good and faithful servant. Oh my God. There's nothing. There can be nothing greater 
to our ear for us to hear those words coming from our Savior and our King. Well done. Because when we have respect unto the recompense of the reward, then we will serve God. We will look for His coming. We will serve Him in spirit and in truth. We will remember our calling. We will make our calling and election sure. So it went on again in verse 7, 27 of Hebrews chapter 11. By faith he forsook Egypt. And then again, by faith Moses forsook Egypt. By faith Moses forsook Egypt. He turned his back on Egypt. You know, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seen who is invisible. So we're talking about faith now. This is the faith. You know, when we talk about Moses, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, when we talk about those great men of old, Elijah, Eli Elijah, 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 and all those great men of old, when we think about them, they had faith in God. Every one of them had faith in God. Every one of them believed in God. Every one of them surrendered to God. By faith, he Moses forsook Egypt, fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seen him who is invisible. So Moses saw him who is invisible, who is Jesus. Uh, God had not yet appeared unto him. God had not yet appeared unto him, but he saw the invisible God. And he endured and flee Egypt. Because he saw the invisible God. You may ask a question, how can you see something that is invisible? And that's a valid question. How can you? It says, as seen him that is invisible. How can you see something, someone who is invisible? But you know how we see the invisible God? Through faith. Because the eyes of faith see it all things. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. The eyes of faith see it all things. So he, Moses, through the eyes of faith, saw the invisible God and said, I'm going out of Egypt. I am leaving Egypt. Now Egypt is, Egypt is a form of bondage. And uh, when when, when someone has not repented, they are really living in Egypt. They are living in bondage. When a sinner has not repented, they are living in Egypt in bondage. It's only Jesus Christ can take a sinner out of Egypt through his blood. And that sinner must believe the word of God and repent and be baptized in Jesus name and God will bless them with the Holy Ghost the Holy Spirit Moses did not see God at that time but he see, through faith he saw the invisible God and he turned out of Egypt went into the wilderness to find his God hallelujah went out into the wilderness to find his God now we know a wilderness is not a pleasant place. Who would want to be in a wilderness? Who would want to go out into the wilderness? But he went out through faith. And he went on verse 28. Through faith he kept the Passover, the sprinkling of the blood, because he was commanded when he went back into Egypt and the, destroying, and the angel told him that all the firstborn will be destroyed in Egypt. But the angel told Moses, You, the people of God, 
kill a lamb and put a mark upon the lintel of your door and when the destroying angel come it will pass over you hallelujah when I see the blood I will pass over you blood is so significant in our salvation blood is so significant in our salvation so through faith through faith he kept the Passover sprinkling the blood upon the lintel of the house of the of all the houses of the children of Israel and when the destroying angel came and they saw the blood they would not touch that horse they would not touch that house they would not enter that house they would not enter into those doors because that's a covenant that God made with his people Israel by faith they passed through the Red Sea as by and dry land uh, by faith if we think about when Pharaoh finally decide to release to let the children of Israel go out of Egypt because he was the plagues that was too much for him the ten plagues that God sent upon Egypt was too much for him so when Pharaoh decided he can't take any more he released the children of Israel but because he did not truly want to let them go he did not want to let them go as he let them go the devil came into him again and said go get them <laughs> praise God and God knew all these things so Pharaoh let the children of Israel go to the promised land as towards the promised land after they left he went after them with his horses and chariots he changed his mind he said why should I let them go who's gonna do all the, 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 these, these work that they used to do who's gonna build the city of Egypt you know so the devil came and told him to go get out go go get them so he did chase after the children of Israel and when they came to the Red Sea then they were cornered and God led them a pillar of fire by night a cloud by night and a pillar of fire by day there was a pillar of fire and there was a cloud that led them to the Red Sea when they got to the Red Sea they looked behind them and there was fear on his horsemen coming coming after them and I guess everybody was so bewildered they said oh my we're finished praise the Lord never say never when we are child of God never say never when we are child of the King never say we're finished never say never praise God and they were trapped there was mountains on both sides and the big red sea in front of them there was no way to go and Pharaoh's armies behind them there was no way to go but God said to Moses you have something in your hand stretch it across the Red Sea what is that you have in your hand stretch across the Red Sea hallelujah but you see how good God is you see how great God is the same God that divided that Red Sea is the same God we serve today and he's here he's with us to divide any sea that the devil want to put in front of us to to separate the waters from the waters is the same it's no different he hasn't changed so Moses raised his rod and stretched across the Red Sea and the waters stood up on both sides were separated and stood up as a wall hallelujah can you imagine I just want to put myself I just want to think how 
the children of Israel must have felt when Moses stretched his hand as just a man. Moses just just a man like me and you. But how God used Moses. And Moses raises his hand, stretches what across, hallelujah, stretches what across the sea, and the sea was divided. And the Bible says the children of Israel passed through the Red Sea on dry land. As by dry land. So God not only dry up the sea, but him dry it not only depart the sea, but him dry up the land that they were to walk on. They never have to walk in any mud or nothing like that. God don't half do anything, you know, brethren. He don't half do nothing. Whatever God does, well done. That is the God we serve. And I, as I said, as I said, when we look into the Word of God and we meditate on the Word of God, it comes over to us how powerful and how good God is. They pass through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptian are said to do, were drowned. <laughs> because what happened? God did not divide the Red Sea for the Egyptian. He divided it for the children of Israel. What God has for you, it is for you. I know a song that says, what God has for you, it is for you. It is not for no one else. It is for you. Whatever God has for you, it is for you. God opened the sea for the children of Israel. He did not open it for the Egyptian. So the Egyptian went after the children of Israel through the Red Sea. And it says they were drowned. Praise God. Your enemy, serve God and your enemy will lick the dust. Serve God and you will look back and be sorrowful for your enemy. Look, serve God and you will be surprised what God can do in your life today. So in verse 30, Hebrews chapter 11, going down to verse 30. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down. And they, after they had compassed it about seven days. Huh? So, God had commanded the children of Israel, the Levites, to go around the wall, circle around Jericho. I imagine they had to do quite a bit of walking to go around that city because it was a city. It was a walled city. And God commanded them to go around the city seven times. Seven is the complete number of God. And they obeyed and they went around Jericho seven times. And it was told them at the end of the seven days, give a shout. Oh, glory be to God. After seven days marching around the walls of Jericho, give a shout. Hallelujah. Shout unto the Lord. And so they did. And they gave a shout. And the walls of Jericho came tumbling down. Oh, my God. How wonderful that must be. Because the children of Jericho thought they were safe. Because they trusted in the walls. But God can tear down any wall. So they were, the walls fell after seven days. And a shout, the walls of Jericho fell. It fell through faith. It was faith in God. And faith in God is obeying God's word. When we obey God's word, we are exercising faith in Almighty God. Verse 31, it says, faith, by faith, the harlot 
Rehab. Rehab was a harlot. But when the spies came in to spy out Jericho, when the children of Israel came in to spy out Jericho, she conveniently hid them that they would not be found by the people in Jericho. Or if they were found, they probably most would be executed. But Rahab made a covenant with them. And the Ahab said, I will hide you. But when you come to take the city, remember me. Hallelujah. How great was that? So Rahab hid the children of Israel when they came to spy out Jericho. And when they returned and Jericho fell, they remember. the war. And when the walls of Jericho fell, they remember Rahab. And she did not perish with the people of Jericho. Because they had made a covenant that she would be saved. So who's on the Lord's side? They are safe. Who is on the Lord's side? They will not perish. They will not suffer. They will not be destroyed. Because we are winners. We are winners. The Lord has never lost a battle. I want to be on the winning side. Jesus is a winner man. He wins all the time. He's the undisputed champion of the universe. He's the unbeaten champion of the universe. That's who Jesus is. He cannot lose a battle. So it's best when we're on the winning side. Don't watch the numbers because it's not always about numbers. It's about the heart. So he went on to say, verse 32, What shall I say then? What more can I say? So the apostles now looking back and seeing how many people has conquered through faith. How many people has overcome through faith. How many has succeeded through faith. He says, what, what shall I say more? Because time would fail me to tell of Gilead, of Barak, Samson, and Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith. Now, look what happened through faith. These men of old conquered through faith. He says, through faith, they subdued kingdom. Subdue a kingdom through faith? You mean put aside kings? Be thrown kings? What righteousness? Did so much great things, powerful things. Obtained promises. Stop the mouth of lion. Oh, praise God. We know what Daniel did. We can't even talk about Daniel. We can't talk about the fate of Daniel. When they, they made the decree that no man should, should worship no other God as pray unto any other God except their, their God. Idol. The decree, this is why we can't obey everything the authority tells us. We cannot obey everything. The decree said no one should pray. Can you imagine the Prime Minister, President, and no, he can't pray? They have no right. But Daniel, true faith, says, I will obey God and I will pray. And he prayed. As usual, turn his face toward Jerusalem. He prayed. And when the king heard that Daniel was praying, he sent to call Daniel. And he loved Daniel. But he made a decree and he had to obey that. Anyone who prayed to any god except the idol god, then they will be cast in the lion's den. Oh my God. Can, can we just see how Daniel was 
looking at things how Daniel believed God that he believed God so much that even though he was he was said that he would be cast into the mouth of the lion that he did not he did not fear that but he feared God enough to say I will pray I will communicate with my God I will talk to my God and no man on earth has the right to tell anyone any child of God not to talk to God and that's what Daniel did he said I will talk to God as usual and when the king found out he had to he had to do what his decree said that he would be cast into the lion's den and Daniel was said cast sent time cast into the lion's den Oh, glory be to God. You see, when you think about these things, it just blows your mind. To see a man standing up for God Almighty. To see a man determined that it doesn't matter what, I'm going to serve God. To see a man like Daniel, he stopped the mouth of the lion. He stopped the mouth of the lion. The power that God give us when we serve Him. The power that God give us when we humble ourselves before Him. The power that God give us when we submit to Him. It is unspeakable. As I said, there, when we serve God, we should not fear anything. We should not allow fear to rule us in any circumstances. We should not allow fear to take over our life. Because Jesus has given us the victory. We are on the victory side. No weapon. The Bible says no weapon that form against us shall prosper no weapon doesn't matter what it is it will not prosper because God says it will not prosper so he went on to say Daniel through his faith in God stopped the mouth of the lion I, I think the lion must have been hungry but when he saw but when he saw Daniel, he did not saw Daniel as food. <laughs> oh my Lord. He did not see Daniel as something that could be eaten. It was God shut that mouth of that lion that he had no taste for any meat. Any type of meat. Because God did it. God did it and true faith and we could go on and on about how great it is when we put faith in God so it quench the violence of fire quench the violence of fire and we talk about the three Hebrew boys but as 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 the, uh, as the apostle says what shall I more say? What shall I more say? For time would fail me to tell about these great men who overcome the world through faith. We could go on and on and on and we would never stop. But we have to stop here because we are end of the we are reaching the end of our time. But God bless you all, my brethren who are here. And may the good Lord cause his face to shine upon you. And may the peace of God dwell with you. As I'm coming to a close. Um Pastor Winston, God bless you. Sister Rose, God bless you. 
PT, God bless you. I'm going to close off with prayer. Everyone else. Amen. God bless you all. Have a wonderful week. Father, in the name of Jesus, I give you thanks, I give you praise, I give you glory for your goodness and your mercies towards us. Lord, I pray you'll help us, Lord, to be faithful. Help us, Lord, to lean on your everlasting arm, Lord God. Help us, Lord, not to doubt you in any, in, at any time, under any circumstances. Help us to build our faith in you, knowing that you can do the impossible for us. Whether it be healing, whether it be deliverance, whether it be any need that we may have, you are able to do it for us. Bless us, keep us, cover us under your blood. Let your peace remain with us, Lord. And we give you thanks and we give you praise. Keep us through the course of the week and help us, Lord, that our mind will be stayed upon you. We give you thanks, we give you praise, we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless everyone. Have a great, wonderful week. And um, God be with you. Amen.